right now, Adam and Joe. Hello and welcome to the big British castle. It's time for Adam and Joe to broadcast on the radio. There'll be some music and some random talking in between. And then eventually the whole thing will just end. Love is like a heat wave by Martha and the Vandellas. That's supposed to be ironic, James, our producer. That's supposed to be a little it's ironic exactly hot reminder it, of what the fact that he's absolutely brassic outside yeah. and he's like, well, winter now. Thanks very much. Summer's totally dead. Thanks for rubbing yeah. that in my face, James, with that choice of song. Martha and the Vandellas heat wave, like a smack in the mouth first thing on a Saturday morning. Thanks, James. It's Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Good morning, listeners. Welcome to the programme. Uh, this week, a very special show. We've got X Factor boy band JLS in the studio <laughs> for three hours. We'll be asking them what it's like to work with Lamar, talking about their number one single, Beat Again, how that felt, and of course, exclusive news about their brand new single coming out early November. That's right, Aston, Marvin, JB, and Ortis, right here in the studio. Uh, and you're behind that, aren't you, Adam? You really <laughs> lobbied heavily to get JLS, JLS in. I thought it was important that we have some live bands and some young guests, oh, the no, young they people. No, no, they can't play live. What do you, what the, how do you mean? Well, they can play live, but they're not, they're not gonna play, well, no, actually they can't. What are they gonna do then? Uh, just chat. You chat. know, what's your favourite pasta shape? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. One of the questions I had. Fun question. Who's your favourite re restoration poet? Will they at any point cry? Uh, hopefully. Yeah, that's the yeah. point, right? Yeah. We'll make them cry. We'll make them cry, of sure. course. Yeah. That's coming up later in the show. That's not coming up later in the show. What? Ladies and gentlemen, just to clarify. What? Because there might have been some people out there who thought, who like tuned in for the first time, they'd heard about the mm. show and they thought, hey, this is, wow, this is a good <laughs> show. <laughs> JLS. They've got a good lineup. I've got nothing against JLS, by the way. No. I don't got know, James. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. JLS. James Lyndon Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> we used to go to school with JLS. That's who it is. Yeah. <laughs> so what have we got coming up in the show if JLS aren't on? All sorts of stuff, but we can't be specific about it. That would be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, though, listeners, I've got one, I've got, I bring it, like, I print out a sheet of notes. I've got an ongoing file on my, um, computer that just says, it's called Six Music Ongoing. Uh -huh. It's a Word document, nice. and I just... Pick away at it all week with things and bits and bobs. I've got like 13 pages of material here. Have you? Yeah. It's mostly made up jokes. Right, we've got a lot of made up. That, that's what we've got coming up. We've got some made up jokes. We've got a very huge response to retro text the nation mm. from last week. Like celebrity names that you repurpose in your everyday life. Celebrity, yes. Uh, what, did you not like the way I said that? You said it just in a cool, exciting way. Celebrity. Celebrity. <laughs> celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> celery or something people have been asking about my elbow which i was uh, complaining about i've had an mm. ongoing problem with my right elbow listeners mm. uh, which uh, we refer to as my elbow and it's been incredibly painful it's not as bad as it was last week my sling is off the sling is off Ooh, it's on the floor that's a very poor bit of appropriation because <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like the heat nah, does nothing it? like it but i'll tell you what i'm gonna do though i'm gonna take some drugs live oh on. drugs in the morning live on the radio that's really bad. Hey, BBC presenters aren't supposed to do that kind of thing. No. Uh. Ooh <laughs> hey! <laughs> Shall we play some music now? Here is a hot new track from a hot new band. Well, they're not new anymore, but they're still hot. Vampire Weekend. This is Horchata, taken from their album Contra, their new album, which will be released in January 2010, the year we make contact. And, uh, mm, that's it, true, isn't it? It is true. We can I think about thought that. thought about that yeah. about next year. Think about that while this is playing horchata. How very fashionable. What? What? That record. In what way? Don't know. Just got all the quirky sounds. Well, that's because they're that, they're that band. I know. I'm, it's a good thing. You say it in that sort of jaded way. <laughs> <laughs> a very fashion. You're like you're taking the mick out of them just for sounding good. What's your problem, Uncle Spikey? Listen, it's Black Squadron. <laughs> Come on, time, <laughs> listeners. Uh, now, how do you think it's going, Black Squadron? Uh, the whole Black Squadron thing. Well, it's a li it's a thing for the live show, isn't it? Because it's mm, it's mm. you can't really put it in the podcast. No. So there's a whole section. Does that, that make you feel weird about it? No, I think it's a fun thing for the live listeners for fun Black thing. Squadron. This is a whole point of Black Squadron. It's a live only yeah, thing. Yeah. Right? What do you think of the whole photo command thing? How that's been going? Uh, I think it 
you are further reducing the amount of people that actually <laughs> care because they can't see the pictures. Because, However, yeah. for the people that send in the pictures and then look at the hey, photo hey, gallery on the blog... Hang on a second. Everyone can see the pictures on the, on the gallery, yeah, on the blog. Yeah. How many people do you think actually go there? 20,000 million. That's true, isn't it? Mm, That's a lot mm, of people. Mm. So what am I talking about? Listen, statistically, the first Black Squadron photo command got 41 photo responses. That was Pan Hat. The second command... Uh, Poltergeist Attack received an extraordinary 121 responses. That's the one that crashed my email server. Backwards Close the following week maintained that figure precisely, 121 photo responses. Last week, Toast Bracelet, <coughs> 70 responses. I'm amazed you got that many. <laughs> 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 so i don't know I, you know that if one were to make a curve out of that <laughs> i mean curve. it's dro it's really dropped off hasn't it last you, you, week do you mean a graph a curve <laughs> <laughs> yeah so no, yeah this week i don't know maybe it's because it was quite sunny last weekend i'm thinking mm -hmm. i mean this week's a, this weekend is a bit more glo gloomy looking down here in london anyway certainly maybe we'll get a better response yeah so here we go. So stand by, Black Squadron, for your photo command. We're going to give you a kind of a theme, and you have to take a photo on that theme and text it to us, 64046, or email it, adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. Just have to establish some parameters before I issue the command this week. Do we on this programme use the word toilet, loo, or lavatory? Very, very seldom, unless it's uh, completely important. If, but if we had to describe that area which of those words would we use because it's something people get very oh yes. very hot under the collar about don't they some people would never say toilet some people would think it's disgustingly you know well trashy to say i'm loo. upper middle class stroke mm. royal so mm. i would say loo you would say loo yeah is that what the royals say yeah that's what we say and then if you were to describe what you use in there uh, would you describe it as paper, tissue, or roll? Oh, no, we say poopy paper. <laughs> Do you say poopy paper? Poopy -poo paper. So, or teepee. No, uh, teepee? Yeah. What do you really say? I, I, do we do say teepee? You say teepee. Oh, I see. You just initialise it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that doesn't really help me. Why? Because I need to describe... Oh, no, we'll say teepee. Oh, it's a bit abstract. Or lavy paper. What's wrong with that? Lavy paper. Okay. All right, Black Squadron, stand by. We're going to... Mm, Sorry, mate. We're going to huh? fire off a, uh, a, a, a track after this, and I'm going to tell you folks uh, that it's going to be Emmy the Great with We Almost Had a Baby. That will be firing off as soon as Joe issues the command, so stand by, Black Squadron. Okay, I'm having... Wor I'm worried about the command. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What do you think is going to happen? For reasons I explained earlier. Do you, you think, think it's going to be all right? Because it's, it's going to be fine. It involves lavatorial props, so you're worried it's going to go People into... People will misinterpret it. Sure. Well, that's something that we can... You know, it's only going to affect us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the Black Squadron command uh, for this week. Here it is. Lavi Paper Egyptian Mummy Attack. That's lovely stuff, isn't it? Emmy the Great with We Almost Had a Baby, uh, and she is known as em Emily Moss. That's her real name. She's known as Emmy the Great. She was born in 1984, which makes her five. Five years old. And she's known by her stage name as Emmy the Great. She's a London-based singer-songwriter. I'm just reading the notes. Mm, you're doing her. a very good job. It's informative. <laughs> <laughs> that track was from her album First Love, released earlier this year um on the close harbor label label this, there's a little photo of her here it doesn't do her justice does it well she's uncommonly attractive she really is she came and played some music for us when we were at glastonbury she's beautiful she is absolutely mm. great in every conceivable way now we've got a free play coming up or i've got a free play and i've chosen a uh, prefab sprout track you know dermot o'leary plays a lot of prefab sprout does he on his radio two show well it's the irish connection <laughs> right Yes, I suppose that's true. <laughs> Is that a clever thing to say? Is he actually Irish, though, Paddy McAloon? I would have thought so. You reckon? Yeah. Um, I don't know if he definitely is. I suppose you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're old Prefab Sprout fans, right? Yeah. And the, particularly the first two albums, Steve McQueen, which is the second one, and the first one is... Uh, What's it called, the first one? Swoon. Swoon, of course mm. it is, yeah. I mean, those are two of the best albums ever made. Uh, 
you know, to say nothing of them being... Young the people might not know who they are, but they're a terrific band. They're one of those bands whose singles really never were a particularly brilliant indication of how great their album material was, right? Yes. If you just heard the things that charted you might get the wrong end of the stick. Well, there's two very different types of Prefab Sprout. There's one quite weird, angular, indie, poppy one, right? Mm. And then there's quite a sugary, uh, some would say overproduced Prefab mm. Sprout. And I, you know, I, I like both, personally, mm, don't mm, you? Mm. You love overproduced sugar. I really do. <laughs> I'm going to play an overproduced sugary <laughs> number right now from one of their albums. Cool. And uh, this is from, I think it's from... Uh, from Langley Park to Memphis, their album. Mm. Uh, mm, it doesn't sound very firm. It just sounds a bit shaky, fact-wise. <laughs> fact-wise. Well, I can check. <laughs> Why not just say that once the at the end of the record, tell people what album it's from? Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, but here's the thing, that we got a we got an invitation, or not an invitation, but but a suggestion that maybe myself and Joe might like to interview Paddy McAloon. He's famously reclusive, as well as the other thing. Yeah. Um... And so we were, we were sort of unsure as to whether we should do it or not. Um, I think maybe it's a bad idea, mm. like, because you shouldn't meet your heroes. And well, what could go wrong? Well, he, I mean, I think I, I get the feeling he's just someone who's not particularly at ease with being interviewed and being a public mm. figure. Mm. And what could go wrong is that he might find it very painful. But we're not very professional, are we? We wouldn't sort of ease over those bumps, would we? No. I mean, it would be a bit of a marriage made in hell, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it would be strange, because we'd, we'd be... We'd be uncomfortable. And the onus on us would be to be silly and... Would it? I Do you think? Why would they ask us to interview him? Well, I don't know. If they didn't want it to be ridiculous. You're right. <laughs> anyway, we'll figure it out. But here's um, Prefab Sprout. This is a track called Knock on Wood from Langley Park to Memphis is the album it came from. Holy moly, we're going to be the ele electric problem. Fleetingly. Fleetingly. What time are we on? Twelve. Well, noon on a Thursday. Yeah. The hottest slottest. It's the biggest slot. Well done, Black Squadron. It's been an extraordinary response to the command this morning, which was Egyptian mummy lavy paper attack mm -hmm. or something. Uh, and what a response. I mean, for about the first three or four minutes of that Emmy the Great track, that's the track we played, isn't it, out of the command, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, God, this is a disaster. But then I literally chatted to you for about 30 seconds. Literally did. Literally did. Turn back to my computer desktop and there were scores. Particularly good one here has come in from... Oh no, Phil! How much is a score? Is this a score 12? 10. 10? Yeah, so scores plural is like units of 10. How many, how many do you think a score is? 20? Why would a score be 20? What sort of a unit is 20? <laughs> we don't know anything. <laughs> I know it's 10! You reckon? Yeah, it's you're just, I'm surrounded by you. ignoramuses who you're are undermining king. my confidence. You're the king of the ignoramuses. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you're I've got a subjects. B in O level maths. A B. <laughs> a B. I know what a score is. I, now I've lost the flipping text. It's a good show, isn't it? The listeners? picture. <laughs> Glad you tuned in, aren't you? Well, there's very good ones of a cat. <laughs> <laughs> score. <laughs> Paddy McAloon is definitely Irish. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a listener saying he's from Stockton on Tees. What, the listener is from Stockton on Tees? Didn't you say the listener said yeah, Paddy yeah, McAloon? Paddy McAloon. But you know, we can't <laughs> just accept anything anyone sends us in as fact, just because it's an opinion that isn't ours. We get lied to so often. Listeners. All right, look, I tell you what, this whole thing about a score being right. 10, yeah. if I'm right about that... Let's figure this out. Okay, point listen, one. Is Paddy McAloon Irish? Point one, right? We need some yeah. corroboration, ladies and gentlemen. Point two. What is a score? Is it 10? Is it 20? Okay, listen, if a score is 10, though, yeah. I am always right about everything, okay? And there can be no what? more questioning my authority. We're going to make this the linchpin. Really? Yeah, this is the example. This is the, um... You know, I can't finish this, the sentence, even. This is the Rosetta Stone of exactly. your kingship of exactly. the right kingdom. Right, you can never question my authority again if right. a score is 10. Uh-huh. What was your stance on Macaloon? Uh, well, I'm just curious to know whether he... I, I don't know if he don't is know. actually Irish. Mm. I mean, I feel like he's probably from... His, his ancestry is probably Irish, isn't it? But I don't think he himself is born and raised in Ireland, is he? I'm not sure. But we need your help, listeners. And what was the other point? Wasn't there one more thing? What, that we're not sure about? Yeah. I know, just those two so far. But we're only, like, half an hour into the programme. I'm sure there'll be more. <laughs> there'll be an awful lot more. 
I'm certain. Uh, so, yes, we said earlier on that we're going to be at the Electric Proms on Wednesday. No, Thursday, isn't it? And we will be announcing later in the show who the winners of our Electric Proms Song Wars competition are. Myself and Joe have picked, out of all the entries we got, uh, just two acts, right? Yeah, one to represent your song, one to represent my song. Yeah, and in the end, how many entries did we get? Well, there were 17 Sontum of Qualis entries, I think. How many Nutty Room entries were there? Around the same. Maybe 20 or something. Mm. And uh, a pretty high standard in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? Because <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> how wooed? No, I'm joking. It was a high standard. Th- th- I tell you, it, it divided very sharply between really pretty disturbingly mad yeah and really very very good Mm -hmm. but uh, what i did was because we weren't exactly overwhelmed with entries right i was able to go on to the youtube channels and Mm. leave personal comments for them insulting comments (laughs) (laughs) well no i had to tread carefully in some areas yeah because it did some of the entries we got did look like the work of of um you know people from the the, mentile yeah yeah the kind of people that dexter might go after (laughs) <laughs> but uh, i left comments for all of them and we'll be finding out who has won that competition later on in the program and i I'm, i've made some comments as well i think uh, uh some stuff that we kind of wrote up is going to be put on our blog uh during or after the show so so check out the adam and joe blog i should say as well i was looking out there for the first full body toilet paper mummy oh yeah i think that's very impressive because it's quite hard to wrangle toilet paper it does tend to rip doesn't it without a partner it's very hard yeah or even with a especially partner. when you're wrapping it around the whole body and often if you when you try and tie it off mm. the perforations let you down yeah and if it's a bit damp as well it tends to why would it be damp oh it doesn't matter <laughs> it's just gone 9 30 here on bc6 music it's time for the news lily allen with the fear this is adam and joe here on bbc six music welcome listeners very nice to have you along on this quite uh, chilly saturday morning we hope maybe that we'll help to warm your cockles with our radio rubbish (laughs) so listen earlier on um we were talking about the fact that uh joe was convinced a score was 20 uh was 10 was 10 and I really hinged my, <laughs> I pinned my reputation on that one. I said that, you know, if I get this right, then I'm going to be right about everything. He wanted forevermore. it to be, so convinced was he that he was right. I, I got a B in O-level maths, he boasted, mm-hmm. that he insisted uh, the result, uh, the answer be the linchpin stroke Rosetta Stone of his kingship of the kingdom of rightness hereafter. We've had various emails. Joe Tiltman says, Dear Correct Adam and Foolish Joe, a score is 20. Uh, he says something quite rude there that I can't <laughs> read about me. <laughs> Ken Pierce, I'm afraid Joe is wrong. A score is 20. Abraham Lincoln famously used the phrase in his Gettysburg Address in 1863. Nigel Lupton, just thought I'd let you know. A score is 20, as in the saying, three score years and ten, to describe someone who's 70 Uh, years old. I could go on for a while. (laughs) There's a lot of emails. So did you just not, um... Gavin Graham, while I'm at it, 20 big lols. (laughs) What happened in the O-level maths class then? Was that... Well, it was a B, wasn't it? And it didn't have any questions about score, what a score was. So you lucked out in a way that you got a B. Paddy McAloon, on the other hand, is from County Durham. That's n- not Ireland. That's no. not Ireland. No. No, that's Teesside. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Teesside. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's Teesside. <laughs> so, you know... Double strikes against cornballs there, surely. Mm, That's not very good, is it? I mean, I'm personally delighted about the score because you were so confident and you really did insist on basing the whole level of respect and and like whether we had to bow down and worship you and stuff. I can't argue with that. It's true. (laughs) Fiesta! Yay! (laughs) In your face, cornballs! It's a 20, not a 10, you idiot hole! Oh, that felt good. Yeah. Well, I, got, I've got, I haven't got a leg to stand on, have I? Dear Adam and Joe, a score is 20. Everyone seems to have heard of Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Mm. Who is this Abraham Lincoln? 
What is this Gettysburg address? I've heard of Abraham Lincoln. Could they all be wrong? Is there still a chance that everyone could be wrong? Yeah, there's always a chance. I mean, it could just be a coincidence. Listen, I'm celebrating, but I'm even stupider than you are. Mm. So, you know, I'm just getting my jollies where I can. Here's some great music for you now, listeners. Wild Beasts, this is All the King's Men. Love it. That's Wild Beasts with All the King's Men. It's my ambition to be in a Wild Beasts video, Joe. That's achievable, surely. You reckon? I mean, they're a big band. They've got posters all over the underground, just absolutely covered in stars and rave reviews for their album Two Dancers, which is thought by many to be the album of the year. You should mm. run out and get it if you don't already own it. And uh, so they could pick and choose, I would think, because they're so hot right now. But I would love to be in that. What I'm thinking is, because I am the polar opposite of the lead singer, I don't know his name, but he's a, a rakishly good-looking, thin young man with a little mustachio, and uh, and that amazing voice, that falsetto. Like, I could lip-sync, right? Don't you think it'd be quite good doing a little bit of hairy uh, squat man lip-syncing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that would be very good. Didn't you do that in some in uh, a video Garth made? That's true. I did a similar thing for The Wanna Dies, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for a track called Little by Little. Yeah, that that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dream. I'm hoping it'll come true before Christmas. I'll let you know if it does, listeners. But right now, I think we should get into Retro Text the Nation. Uh, let's have the jingle jongle. I like to listen to Adam and Joe. But I listen to the podcast, not the live show. I used to feel acute frustration. Because I couldn't join in with Text the Nation. But now my troubles have disappeared Because Retro Text the Nation's here And now my letter might be read out Instead of thrown in the trash and forgotten about so last week's Text the Nation listeners was all about repurposing celebrity names, kind right. of mangling them for, for daily use. And to be honest, it didn't go spectacularly during the live show. We kind of got a few good ones. Susan Surround Sound, I remember being a very <laughs> good one. I'm going to be using that one. The rest of them were frankly not Boris good enough. But during the week, it really took off. Yeah. Uh, the emails came flooding in and we've got loads of good ones now. Sorry to go on a tiny tangent, mm. but can I just say it was nice to hear trash back in the jingle there was that the trash version again yeah yeah well there's that's divided our listeners as well hasn't it some people love the bin version some people like the trash version there it's, are a lot of people it's impossible to be some people think a score is 20 <laughs> some people think it's 10 it's just impossible to please everybody some people think Paddy when Mac there is no is, right or wrong it's from ireland in county durham in ireland <laughs> I mean, truth is, you know, it's an abstract concept, isn't it? It's a flexible friend. Isn't exactly. It? Yeah. So here are the best uh, text donations <laughs> we got during the week. Here's one from Simon in London. Hi, Adam and Joe. Listening to your text the nation on, on repurposing famous names, I thought of a phrase we used to say at uni a lot. When something was particularly contentious, rather than labelling it con controversial, we would say that it was john controversial. <laughs> <laughs> After the start of Grease and Face Off. Take care, Simon in London. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Here's a couple from Jane right now. She says, here are some fun sprinkles for the show. That's nice, isn't we it? We love fun sprinkles on our show but then she says don't get too excited about oh, it oh no <laughs> so she builds it up with the fun sprinkles then she whips the sprinkles away she if, knows us so well she really does how many sprinkles are there i mean hundreds and thousands really yeah how many scores <laughs> four score and uh another four score and then several more scores she says if you have a long hard day at work mm. and you have a drink when you get in that's called a mike baldwin or a baldwin for short Ideally, it would be a whiskey poured straight into a tumbler. Why is it called that? Well, this is more about uh, what's associated with the names than mm. the actual names themselves. So mm. is she straying outside the rules there? Well, I don't even understand it Mike at all. Baldwin, is there I think any he's a, he's a soap character who likes a drink, right? It, I don't know. She goes on, if I have a glass of wine while I'm cooking dinner, this is called a Keith Floyd, God rest his soul, or a Floyd for short. Love, love, love the show. So she's associating it with, like, what they were associated with. That's mm. not It's an interesting rules. choice. I shouldn't have chosen that one. It's a good... No, it's good. With. I guess I... Yeah, it's... I was seduced mm. by the sprinkles. The sp that was a good opening. <laughs> How about this one? John from Stockport. Every time my girlfriend puts Savalon on her lips, I always say, putting some Jimmy Savalon. <laughs> 
<laughs> you even said it like Savile. On. Well, exactly. I think I did a good job there. Jimmy Savile on. Yeah, uh, I'm, rec- I'm recovering. Here's one from Mo. Um, and I think this is within the within the rules of the uh, uh, retro textination. When I think my four-month-old daughter may have done a poo, I say to her, let's go and check your Alan de Bottom. Makes me chuckle anyway. That's Thank good. You, Mo. That's good. Here's one from Claire in Sheffield. Hi. When I'm leaving work, I say, I'm off, which mutated to, I'm off ski, and has now settled it. I'm Darren Aronofsky. <laughs> That's a I good don't one. think anyone at work knows who Darren Aronofsky <laughs> is, but they just accept it. Claire from <laughs> Sheffield. More fool them. Here's one from Mark in Godalming. He says, um, I know you've probably stopped doing the famous names repurposing thing, but I just remembered a good one that me and my wife do. So it's not too late. When you're getting the kids dressed and you're putting their tops on and you ask them to hold their arm out so you can get the sleeve on with greater ease, you sometimes say, put your arm in, but we say, idi arm in. Nice. That's good. And then he says, do you think the former president of Uganda's name is an appropriate one to use when dressing a (laughs) five-year-old? I would say no, Mark. (laughs) One from Paul in Beckenham. Uh, if I wake up in the morning and I'm going to visit the parents, or maybe a semi-important business appointment, I might gaze in the mirror, rub my chin, turn to my lovely wife and ask her, do I need a Hugo Chavez? <laughs> Many's the night when I've set my alarm thinking, do I need a Hugo Chavez tomorrow? In fact, the word shave has lost all meaning for me now. And when I hear the name of the president of Venezuela on the TV or radio, I think about my chin. But then you have to go for the soft CH. I would call him a Hugo, Chavez. Hugo Chavez. Chavez. Hugo Chavez. <laughs> Well, he's manipulating it there for his own purposes. Typical of Chavez. Exactly. (laughs) Those are pretty good, though, don't you think? A good result? Have you got some more there? I've got one or two. I've read out all the best ones, to be perfectly honest. I've got some good ones. Give us another. Here's one from Lizzie Finn. When I'm feeling, and I do this one as well, I bet bet you do, and I bet a lot of people do. Mm. When I'm feeling bogged down a bit with too many boring or mundane things to do at work, which stop me from doing something more interesting, I'll sometimes say to my boyfriend, I was pretty Peter Bogdanovich today at work. That's good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I've been Peter Bogdanovich. I was going to make times. a um, a Bog- Peter Bogdanovich joke on the blog. Were you? I was going to call it the Peter Bogdanovich. Nice. But, th- but then I wondered whether anyone would understand what I was saying. Of course. No one under 30 would, probably. Here's a final one, uh, and this came in from a couple of people who do the same thing. Uh, James in Devon and Stephen McLaughlin, they both say cats later as opposed to catch you later. That's good. That's quite a classic one, I think. Yeah. Here's another EastEnders-related one. Cats later is, is in EastEnders, right? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. This is from Mark Redman. Reedman. Dear Adam and Joe, my wife and I used to enjoy playing on the, playing on the tenuous rhyme between escutcheon the little protective metal disc that covers a keyhole, and Martine McCutcheon, the actor who played Tiffany in EastEnders. When approaching the door, we would brandish the key and say, excuse me, Martine, as we nudged the escutcheon to one side. The voice we used for this tended to be gruff and masculine, a bit like Tiffany's dad, Terry. Sadly, we can't do this anymore as we've got no escutcheons where we live. Best wishes, Mark Redman. Wait, wait, I'm reeling from the news that that is called an escutcheon, the little disc that Am covers the Am I saying it keyhole. right, escutcheon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't trust myself anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking on mental eggshells. <laughs> Your faith in yourself has been shaken to its core. Come on, that's a good one, isn't it? To its score. Tell me it's a good one. Please <laughs> tell me I've done something right. Jobo, that was absolutely... I hate this program. That was brilliant, man. That was Thanks, really man. good. Now, listen, here's some music that'll make you feel better about yourself, right? All right. I've never heard it before, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be very inspiring. This so is my free play, you oh, bag. <laughs> <sighs> this is uh, called... Have you never heard this before? This is on a compilation Edgar Wright made for me years ago. And it sounds like a classic to me. It's by someone called Blossom Deary. I think it's remixed a lot. This is called... Uh, it's from... Where is it from? I'll t- hang on. I'll tell you what years it is from. Is this all right to do this kind of thing? Just it's... to stop and then mumble and then flick papers? Yeah, but is I mean, acceptable? it's you telling us what year it's from. How can we believe you? <laughs> That's true. I've got Just make up no here. authority anymore. It's from 2050. <laughs> uh, this is Blossom Deary with I Like London in the Rain. It's like they sort of leave the machine running there at the end. That's Corner Shop with Sleep on the Left Side. And the record before then, the Blossom Deary one, it was from 1970. And that's a fact! Oh. Nin- and the, from the album, ah, that's just <laughs> the way I want to be.
It's all right, man. It's a popular breakbeat sample. Facts. Three solid, uncontestable facts. No, the fiesta really got to you, didn't it? I don't like negative fiestas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was a bully fiesta. It was a little It was bit. just a mocking. It was a nasty party. Well, the in-your-face party. Yeah, it's not. It's just not a relaxing party. It's like a really horrible surprise party. If it's party. any consolation, everyone else. It's like you fiesta, come home, you open had a your door, time. and instead of everyone coming up <laughs> from behind the sofa and going woo, they come up and go Aah! in your face specifically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in yeah. your in your face, you yeah. idiot hole. Yeah, I mean, I just I deserved it. I did, oh come! I did on. get it you wrong. Didn't deserve it? You didn't deserve it. I'm really sorry. It's never gonna. You're never gonna have a a, a bullying fiesta again mm-hmm. this week. Um, now, what are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, yes, we've got to stand down Black Squadron before we go any further, for goodness sake. I mean, it's ten o'clock. They're supposed to be stood down at 9.30. They've been I'm standing there for an hour, wrapped in lavatory wrapped paper, in from, lavatory paper. Or at least proper Black Squadron members would have been. Yeah. Hey, Black Squadron! Stand down, your work is done. You've earned yourself a nice warm bath. And maybe a nice little bun. You could have a nice little bun in the bath if you wanted. That's entirely up to you. Now, a couple of weeks back, when it wasn't quite so cold, me and my family went to have some family fun at a place called Pleasurewood Hills over in uh, East Anglia. It's, you know, other theme parks... Sounds like a dirty park. ...are available. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't sound like a place to take the kids, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I'd never thought of it like that, but it does sound dirty, doesn't it? Pleasurewood Hills. Anyway, it's not. It's an absolutely Those delightful... Three of the sexiest words in the English language. It's true, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They they are the backbone of the porn industry, those words. So why would you want to take your family... <laughs> Especially hills. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's dirty. A big, dirty theme park. It's not like that at all. Obviously, it's a family fun day out, and it's a very enjoyable one, too. And we were having such a good time there. What did they have there? They had, um, they had... I mean, I'd hope they had woods and hills. It was gently rolling hills. There was some attractions that were made of wood, mainly fiberglass. What kind of things? Uh, bum, you know, slides, bums. water shoots, slides, bums, a giant <laughs> bum. glass bum. A huge woman that you could walk inside. <laughs> what? <laughs> the usual stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, focus. Why oh, are you the one who has <laughs> just like the image of you and your family going to Pleasurewood Hills and playing on the fiberglass bums? <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. You could slide down the crack and... Yeah, yeah. Anyway. They didn't have any of that, right? It's a nice place. It's, mm. a, it's a nice family place. Although, you know, if we ever got, like, some spare time and money, we could certainly think about setting up that other theme park. <laughs> I think it would be nice. <clears throat> um, but we were queuing up for one ride. It wasn't so much a ride. It was a little bit like one of those... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what are you thinking of the word ride? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. Come on, smarty-minded Cornish man. It's just fun. <laughs> so you were queuing up for a ride. <laughs> queuing up for a ride. Mm. Oh. But it wasn't exactly a ride. No, it wasn't. It was what it was. Uh, was just like a chairlift. Basically, is what it was. Mm. You know. <laughs> Do you remember the first episode of Father Ted, where there's a kind of um, very low rent theme park and and uh, one of the attractions is just a sofa on a on a winch being moved up and down or something like that uh, there was a touch of that t- to this um chairlifts are fun though when i was a yeah. kid and before i'd ever been skiing i used to uh, and i've only been skiing like twice didn't really like it mm-hmm. but i used to be mesmerized by chairlifts yeah Extra- brilliant idea really exciting were your kids excited to go on the chairlift well they really were they were very excited mm. so so we queued up but the thing was i don't know why exactly oh yes because you could you could get on the chairlift and then get off the other end or you could uh go and then come right the way back so there was people getting on and off at either mm-hmm. end of mm. the of the chairlift right which sort of stretched across the center of the park mm. um so <laughs> good view of the bums <laughs> yeah i mean just breathtaking <laughs> <laughs> and uh so 
so you had to wait like uh, to get on every other chair do you see what i'm saying like yeah. they weren't letting people on every single chair so it was taking quite a long time because the chairs were moving imperceptibly slowly was the other thing so queuing up for this thing even though there are only about six people in the queue was a very long-winded business and in front of us was this uh, couple these two men and they were chatting away and they were very excited about uh, getting on the chairs and then there was in front of them this big uh, lady big matriarch uh, loud woman and she was there and, and at one point she turned around to this large group of people that came in and started uh joining the queue behind us and she said come on come up here you're coming up here and we were like really there's about six people that have just joined the queue there and she's inviting them to jump ahead of us she's like yeah come on and they were sort of dithering sort mm. of not sure if that was cool to go ahead in front of so many people which of course it wasn't but she said yeah come on come on yes i'm standing here so you're coming up here come on you're all coming and standing come on yes you're coming here come on so they all start pushing ahead of myself and my family and the people behind That's us disgusting. and also the, the this couple of guys in front of us right and i was thinking surely this is not on because they've just doubled the length of this already very long wait uh, so the two guys in front just sort of said, they're not coming and standing there. No way. We're, we're waiting in the queue. And this woman just rounded on them. She said, what? They <laughs> are standing here. All right, because I say so. Don't tell me what to do. It got really aggressive Sounds really like fast. Some kind of theme park in Royston Vasey. It was. It turned into one at that point. It was really very aggressive. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, these guys are never... But they they wouldn't stand for it. These guys totally held their ground. And uh, they said, you know, they weren't being rude or anything. He just said, look, darling, come on, we've all been... And she goes, don't call me, darling! How dare you call me, darling! And then she started s spitting a homophobic abuse at them no yeah and swearing at them and at one point it looked like she was gonna get violent with them and i was no. thinking oh my gosh and and then her family of kids and stuff started uh shouting at these guys and like hurling abuse at them as well it was really harsh broken britain it was really broken britain but luckily it just just as at boiling point where i was just thinking you know count buckley's might have to step in here uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what would count buckley's have done uh, probably, you know, just maced them all. <laughs> <laughs> really? And, uh, I don't know what Buc Count Buckley's would have done. He would have used his very tremulous, now frightened look. voice. Excuse me, can you, um, um, now look, stop it. Anyway, Count Buckley's didn't have to step in because the woman said, all right, we're going to leave. We're going to leave. The smells get into me in this queue anyway. <gasps> it was ridiculous. Wow. She was like a kind of cartoon matriarch woman. Do you think you would have stepped in in that situation? <laughs> I don't know. With someone oh, that know. over the top? I don't know. I don't know. No, I would be scared because you can't take on a whole family. No. God has designed families to... I think in prime, uh, caveman times, whole families would fight right. regularly. And the children would go for the ankles, yeah. you know, and the, and the sensitive <laughs> parts, head-butting... The bottoms. The bottoms. <laughs> she was a very scary matriarch. But when, when she had gone, I very pathetically leaned forward and patted the guy on the back and said, Good on you, mate. Good on you, mate. Good on you, mate. Did you go Australian for I did for go that? Australian. I did don't you? know why. And what did they say? He said, wow, she was taking the mick. Mm. So uh, there was a nice little sense of community after. What an extraordinary outing. Wow. What an amazing theme park. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend it, I tell you. Right, here's a bit of Most Deaf right now. You like Most Deaf, Yeah, yes? this is a good record. This is called Quiet Dog. I think it's called Bark Loud, but knowing my luck with facts, it's not. I think it's from the album The Ecstatic. Um, no, it's from previous one, I think. But listen, forget about facts where we're concerned. We're going to look up these facts during this record, but one thing we can say is this is most deaf. Oh, no, it's that dog again. <laughs> Listeners, uh... Hello, oh. a little bit of rap. Little rap and music, little bit of rap. Boggins has come back into the studio. Boggins is quite a controversial dog. We had a couple of emails. Oh, I've just done a poo. Um, shh, 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 Boggins, shh, shh, shh. I'm gonna eat it. Can't understand what you're saying. Natalie in Cardiff says, I love Boggins. He's fab, a great addition to the show. Any chance he'll be making an appearance every show? Whereas John Usher from York says, Hi, I heard Boggins again on the podcast and he's still rubbish. I'm going <laughs> to lick your face. Is it In okay? fact, shh, shh, Boggins. In fact, <laughs> listening to Boggins makes me feel physically <laughs> sick now. I beg of you, please stop allowing Boggins into the show. Thank you, John Usher from York. 
I mean, there's two very oppositional <laughs> views of that. A bird, I'll kill it and I'm going to eat it. Is that okay? I love you. <laughs> Sad that he's incomprehensible these days. But listen, I'm, I'm going to agree with John Usher and I'm actually going to have Boggins put down <laughs> because he's, an, he's a nuisance and he's not sanctioned at all by the BBC. He comes in here. I think the receptionists probably like him or let him in or turned a blind eye. But he's recently weed on t Terry Wogan. I love you. Can I eat your... I'm uh, gonna eat your face. He used to be popular I'm when gonna he was lick on your in the 70s, but knees. now he's just a relic. <laughs> so I'm gonna put him down. Uh, <laughs> he's frightened. He's gone off. What have you done to Boggins? He ran off. I he threatened to ran, have him put down. He ran past me the as I was coming him. back from the toilet. The audience hate I him. I hate him as well. I hate dogs. Apart from Natalie and Cardiff, <laughs> she's the only person who would stand up for Boggins. She what? No, come on, I love dogs. Well, I'm just joking. Dogs are adorable. Why would you want to We're not talking hurt about dogs. We're talking specifically about Boggins. Oh, about Boggins. Elderly, <laughs> incomprehensible, uh, dog with, with bottom-based problems. He's so sweet. <laughs> 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 well, he's gone now, listeners, so let us know if you want Boggins put down. It smells, though, doesn't it, in here now? Yeah. It stinks. He's, he's a... so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Let us know if you want us to kill Boggins. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, hey, we, ooh, what? Hey. What? <laughs> <laughs> Saying that. Yeah, in a very, it would be humane, wouldn't it? <laughs> He's looking yeah, it would at be a James. Shot. He's looking at the presenter. Uh, well, there's probably just to check. guidelines on executing <laughs> fictional dogs. <laughs> Aren't there? You know, this is the big British castle. You can't just, you can't just murder an idea like, <laughs> like that. Well, we do that all the time. Murder in imaginative space. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, so I would like your advice, Adam. Yeah. Do you text? Do you like to text people? I do it uh, once in a while. The reception <clears throat> I have is not so good, so I I'm have a to... keen texter. I love yeah. to text. Uh, do you, when you text someone, do you put a little kiss at the end? Ah, uh, no, I don't go for the kiss, no. I just go for the initial. Do you? Yeah, Do yeah. you really? Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, this is, a, this is a factor in emailing as well, isn't it? How you sign off emails. Actually, now you mention it, I go for the initial in an email mm. when it's clear who it's from. You do a kiss. No, no kissing, no kissing. No kissing. Never, never, never. No. In never you never kiss. Or I put love. You put love. Yeah. Love yeah. ad. Yeah. In yeah. an email. You see, when I first started texting many years ago, the person I used to text the most, my text buddy, he used to put a, a kiss. Mm -hmm. See you later. Bye. See you at the cinema. Uh, so I got not into the habit kisses, of though, not three kisses, just one. I'm exaggerating for effect. Yeah. Right. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a weird thing, isn't it? Because he's not a man I would kiss yeah. i mean not really even i would kiss him on the cheek but not regularly and you get you find yourself in funny situations when you put a kiss after a text for instance i was texting a friend quite a new friend and you know the kisses were flying it was very it was very mundane conversation like meeting up and where you're going to be and so and so but at the end of everything it was a <laughs> <laughs> a little kiss. So what do you do, like, for instance, so your opening one can have a kiss, because maybe you think the conversation's not going to go that far. Yeah. But then we ended up having quite a long conversation, and I was still doing the kiss at the end of each... Well, uh, you started kissing him, too. Yeah. You are so easily led. It's just a fun... I mean, it doesn't, me it doesn't mean I want to kiss the friend, necessarily. Oh, it does. Does it? Yeah. Well, that's one of the dangerous areas, because <laughs> he stopped putting kisses at the end of his he was getting uh, freaked out. messages. I kept sending the kisses. Did you? Yeah. Okay, then. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if in a real conversation, you just, <laughs> after every sentence, yeah. you just lent in and... <laughs> and then you might be like one of those Euro people who go for, one of the yes. random people who go for a lip kiss. A lip kiss. Oh. There's someone I, I'm working with on the thing I'm working on, quite a professional guy, uh, and at the end of every email, whatever it's about, it's big kiss, small kiss, big hug, small hug, kiss. How do you do a hug? A circle, I do believe. I Is that a hug? Well, I think so, unless it's something more racy. <laughs> I think it's, um... <laughs> What if it's mouth, some other kind of mouth pleasure? <laughs> a tongue kiss? Yeah. I mean, well, these are what? quite business-like emails yeah. we're getting about, you know, f uh, photography tests and stuff. 
and it'll be yeah the tests look really good uh see you on monday Mwah. Uh. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a tongue kiss I was doing there. Mm. <laughs> 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 but I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue kissing because I think, you know, sometimes you have to take a view on whether to do that kind of thing in a message to your parents as well. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, or whether to do it, you know, sometimes the professional and personal boundary can be blurred. If you're working with someone important who you're also friendly with, mm -hmm. is it is it good to give them a couple of kisses? I do see. I, I just go for the you catch all love, love ad. which which I think for for some people is probably yeah. a bit creepy anyway. But I'm going to carry on kissing. You carry on, man. But I hope you take precautions. Thank you. Here's some music now. This is the Smiths with What Difference Does It Make? Extraordinary response to my threat to humanely <laughs> cull Foggins. <laughs> I mean, the listenership is really, really divided. Are they? Some people are absolutely, what's the phrase? Uh, chomping at the bit. Chomping or champing? Both. Champing and chomping at the bit to see Boggins... Uh, executed. <laughs> An anonymous executed. Uh, text, put Boggins in a sack and drop bricks on him. Oh, that's hot. I know. Well, I'm just reading out what people have sent in. Yeah. This is a, this is a fictional dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but just the thought. You can't be too careful these days. I mean, look, exactly. look what happened on telly last weekend. X Factor and Strictly. Scat, both of them. Uh, enveloped in scandals. Yeah, yeah. It, the world is so scandal sensitive right now. Certainly, a scandal. You've got to be very, very careful. At any point. Fictional dog. Let Boggins taste the sweet release of death. I hear it's delicious. <laughs> Who's that from? It's, an, it's anonymous. That's They're the all thing anonymous. about uh, anonymity is read so out dangerous. Creepy anonymous texts about killing fictional animals. We love Boggins. Don't do it. Says someone else. Yeah. Some a lot of younger listeners are very distressed. I mean, he absolutely stinks, Boggins. By the fictional dog, but he's so sweet. He's very sweet. He will drag his bottom across the carpet. He does. He's got some problem with his glands, I think. <laughs> so he's trying to itch them, and it leaves a terrible smell. He is trying to. But he's itch very them. sweet. Save Boggins. <laughs> Don't send Boggins to doggy heaven early. He's brilliant. Paul in Glasgow. <laughs> He's a little kiss there. Two kisses. Two kisses from Paul. No hugs. What I'd like to do is if listeners give us kisses, can we invite them in to actually give us the kisses? Just on the cheek. What's happened with your plan to sleep with the listeners? I don't know. There's been very little. Uh, there was a response from the listeners, wasn't there, that the, pr the production team haven't exactly swung into action. Yeah, things move very slowly at the castle. They do, don't they? It'll have to be approved, but it will happen. I mean, to say you have to jump through hoops is a understatement of massive proportions so folks i don't know if you know but we've got a podcast available of this program and it's not just like a little condensed package of highlights although essentially that's what it is they just remove the music and the stuff that we can't clear and you're left with all the talking bits but you're also left with some wonderful jingles and a little intro and an outro that's a special dedicated uh, intro and outro for the podcast um, but some people still don't know that this thing exists and we care about the podcast very much and it's available to download free on uh, iTunes and other places like that uh, every Monday evening it usually comes out. But we want to make as many people aware of the existence of the podcast as possible. So James, our producer, was suggesting we do some kind of trail, right, that we mm. can play during the live show. So, uh, running out of time this week, I came up with, uh, this. I'll play <coughs> the opening part of the trail. So this, I was thinking that this would go at the beginning of a little package of highlights from the podcast. So this would be the intro part of the trail. Here it is. Hi, my name's Adam Buxton, and I want to talk to you about podcasts. Thousands of people in the UK get the Adam and Joe podcasts every Monday night. They're not serious. But if they're not dealt with immediately, they can build up and become irritating. The podcast is caused by the highlights of Adam and Joe's Six Music Show on a Saturday morning, with all the actual music bits surgically removed. However, there are some extra bits which can be highly infectious. 
You see, do you get the joke? <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes it sound sort of, um, like quite, quite clinical and dangerous. It's like a public health warning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but then I, I chose the wrong sort of music, really, to go underneath. Well, it's like you're repelling people from the podcast. And it's like <laughs> I'm repelling. That's the other problem with it. I was, see, I was playing it to you because I wanted to see if you'd spot the problem with it. It's repellent. <laughs> <laughs> it's good though it's very good you want to hear the outro yeah here's the outro that would come after the clip packages if this was ever used which it I will not i be. can't wait <laughs> and it seems like as if i don't have to which is, is wonderful here it is the good news is that adam and joe podcasts are not serious and can be got rid of very easily if you'd like to catch adam and joe podcasts your best bet is to hang around the internet on a monday night or you can sleep with someone who already has Adam and Joe podcasts. They're generally <laughs> easy to spot because they're very attractive. <laughs> I like the music bed. That's uh, that's a sort of um. Oh, yeah, no, it's like I a fun government that. announcement. It is, isn't it? I mean, it's depressing, but yet upbeat at the same time. Kind so, of thing. like life, quick, like illnesses. Before my free play, thumbs up or thumbs down for the podcast trail. Thumbs up, man. Oh, thanks, man. Definitely. It's unexpected. Here's Wire with Dot Dash. Wire with Dot Dash. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. It's just after 10.30 and time for the news. An extraordinary 140 Black Squadron pictures have come into the studio. Now, that's amazing. Our previous record was 121. That's really amazing. Well done, Black Squadron. Very good response, Squadron. And that's not even accounting for the pictures we might receive during the week. We salute you. You just heard the police there with So Lonely. It's a little bit of shtung for you. And uh, he's got a new album of, like, madrigals played on a mouth harp or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Has it? <laughs> Coming out, yeah. And uh, will you be buying that one? No. You used to love Stung. Well, I was thinking about that the other day. I went through a peculiar phase when s s uh, s Hi-Fi Stereo videotapes first came out. Uh, Do you remember? Yes, yes. And for some reason he released his concert film, The Dream of the Blue Turtles, yeah. or Bring on the Night, or whatever it's called. I think they're both concert films. Well, Bring on the Night was a police film. Dream of Blue Turtles was right. a solo album. One. With his wife giving birth. Uh, yes, in the middle of it. and that amazing yeah. jazz band he Yeah, assembled. and he did assemble an incredible, like, jazz funk band. Yeah. And, yeah, we used to listen to that a lot, to listen to the Omar Hakim drum solos yeah. and stuff. But not anymore. <laughs> Have you listened to that album recently? I haven't, no. It crossed my mind to buy it again, on to buy the DVD, actually, of the film, just to, just as a kind of nostalgia trip. Love is the seventh wave, I say love <laughs> is the seventh hey. wave. Hey, was good. Hey, it's good. It's really, really good. It's good. So listen, folks, uh, text the nation this week, right? Let's have the jingle jungle. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. I mean, what's happened, essentially, is that Textination and Retro Textination within the body of the live programme have kind of swapped places. Uh, re you know, Textination now is really just, uh, we get the topic rolling, and then people are welcome to respond to it either in the live programme or during the week. And we do get an awful lot of people listening on the podcast who respond to, or listen again, who respond to the Textination topic via email and so email, you're saying that we shouldn't sort of go hell for leather with it we don't have to i'm just show. saying we don't have we to shouldn't go. let it take things over exactly because people can respond during the week and then it makes for an even more considered That's right. uh retro text the yeah. nation we don't have week. to have like yeah. five or seven segments well, then sh shut up about why don't you shut up why don't you just shut up about it yeah you know what you i've got changed that my chill mind. cake no i haven't do you want me to get no? I'll, I'll get it. We'll get into that joking. later. We have had a missive from the have from we? the the baker of the chair. Oh, was he angry? No, nah, he's all right. We'll, we'll I'll tell out. you about that later. All right, but listen. Before we go any further, uh, the email if you want to respond to our textination topic this week is Adam and Joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk, or you can text us. Of course, six four zero four six is the text number. And this week we're talking about family holidays or family breaks specifically right not like the big family half summer term. holidays but half term you're breaks. talking half term I'm talking half term right did you yeah. ever go on half term breaks with your family yeah boy <laughs> <laughs> sounds like i know why did i respond like that don't know because you're in of course i enemies. did did you what kind of thing would you do we would go to devon did you yeah to devon? Mm. devon knows how they make it so creamy you came every now and then yes you didn't like it very much dulverton you got bored yeah no i never got bored Dulver we... dulverton's in all the papers now 
Why? Because it's... some ridiculous journalist has moved there and, yeah. and they're trying to make a big deal out of it. Because it's unfriendly? Uh, well, that's what they're saying, which is nonsense. Nonsense. It's the we most had beautiful, a... yeah. friendly village in the country and a great deal of members of my family live there. Yeah, we had a nice time there, I remember. They're the ones around. trying to chase out the journalists. We found an abandoned car and jumped on top of it. Smashed it in. And then we realised <laughs> it wasn't abandoned. <laughs> So that's what we used to do, little <laughs> trips to Devon. <laughs> the good times. What have you got planned for your family at half term? Well, we are going to centre parks. The holiday the weather can't spoil. Other holidays the weather can't spoil are available. But um, we're going there and it's a, it's a place... I've never been to, to that kind of uh, holiday resort before. The, the kind of... A space-aged one. It's sort of space-aged. It's under a biodome. Uh, but more specifically, I'm thinking of places like that, a little bit like Butlins and... Mm, a uh, holiday camp. A holiday resort camp. I mean, that's what it is. They wouldn't want to call it that, would they? Because that sounds so retrograde. Yeah. Uh, but essentially, I suppose, yes, it's kind of high-end holiday camp, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, mm. medium end. So, well, you know, I haven't been there. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't be able to comment, possibly. But What end it is? I don't know what to expect, but mm. I'm a tiny little bit nervous about it. Yes. Right? Because also the other thing is that you're thrust together with a lot of families at those places. I mean, you get your little... Uh, log cabin in the woods mm, or mm, something like that mm, i'm hoping mm. and then you plan your activities and stuff like that but my family hasn't really been on its own like we've been on family holidays but generally we're joined by other people and stuff like that it's sure to be perfect it's i, I can see you on your bikes yeah cycling across wood chippings in the rain i can see you whizzling down a water slide uh -huh. frank going Woo! Yeah. you catching him at the bottom and going <laughs> <laughs> tossing your head back <laughs> I can see maybe uh, Reading your that. younger son, yeah. Natty, cooking maybe with your <laughs> wife. <laughs> Why are they laughing? Because they're having such a great oh, time. I see. I think it's going to be brilliant. Yeah. And um, and then me and my wife in the evening uncork a bottle of wine, have yes. a little barbecue. And... Mm. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Egyptian mummy attack. Yeah. Then go off to the fiberglass bum. <laughs> <laughs> the fiberglass bum bar. <laughs> it's going to be lovely. I, you know, the thing I'm slightly worried about is the whole water slide thing, because yeah. I know that's going to be a big part of the attraction. But I feel a bit self-conscious going in and stripping off in, in a big communal you used area. To wear, you used to put a proper T-shirt on, didn't you? Yeah. When I, you were little. You don't like bearing your upper torso. No, no, I'm not, mm. I'm not that proud of my upper mm. torso. So, you know, on holiday, like on a, on a summer holiday, you have the excuse that you're protecting yourself from the sun's evil rays. Mm. But you can't do that under the biodome. That's true. What are you going to do? Well, you could. You could wear one of those um, uh, wetsuits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't think that would mark me out as being slightly eccentric no 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 i think it's acceptable these days right. because let's face it nipples are obscene they are disgusting. and in this con in this contemporary conservative climate yeah especially hairy nipples men's nipples it's time to conceal them properly that's no, what i'm saying hairy nipples yeah it's too much for, for children for young children so anyway there's any number of things that could go right as you've pointed mm. out but there's a lot of things that could go mm. wrong. You know what? I forgot this was a text the nation subject. Well, exactly. I thought we were just chatting. Just chatting. So specifically, listeners, I'm curious about these kind of breaks that you've had that maybe have gone disastrously wrong. I'd like to know details. So don't forget the text number is 64046 or for a longer missive, Adam and Joe dot six music at BBC dot So co what is it again? Just things that have gone wrong, things that have gone wrong on specifically half term holidays. Well, when you put it like that, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make it <clears throat> easier for the listeners. Yeah, 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 yeah. So whether it's a caravanning holiday, you know, not not specifically summer holidays, but short breaks with the family that have turned out to be a bit of a mare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, did you order a cab? Yes, I did. Has it arrived? Yeah. Is did you order a death cab? Oh no, I didn't want a death cab. Uh, I just wanted a normal cab. Uh, also, I'm not technically a cutie. Uh, so i don't think it would this this cab is for cutie isn't it is it not this is called meet me at the equinox <laughs> <laughs> meet me at the equinox that's death cab for cutie i mean we did a very sort of obvious intro into that didn't we that all that it's like there's a when am i gonna get my chill cake oh yeah let's let's deal with that so last week listeners 
I'm going to do a little edit point here for the podcast. Yeah. Last week, listeners, we had uh, a chill cake <laughs> sent in to us. <laughs> Is that going to work? <laughs> That's a good idea. Like, just rehearsing it on the live show. Yeah, yeah. So that we can edit it for the yeah. podcast. Thanks. <laughs> we were sent a chill cake by a listener, an actual chill cake. Uh, the listener's name is Tom Williamson, who lives in Liverpool. And some of our listeners were quite angry about our response to the chill cake. I mean, the chill cake, I think, had gone slightly off. It was made with fresh cream and posted from Liverpool. I think the cream may have been on the turn. And we did eat it, and that in and of itself is above and beyond the call of duty, because you're not really supposed to eat things that are sent in by listeners if you're a broadcaster. Um, is there any case history there? Ha have any producers, f uh, any presenters fallen foul of poisoned missives? I think Eamon Holmes was in a coma for <laughs> eight years after eating a poisoned <laughs> caramel. Cake. A chill cake. I thought it was a spiked <laughs> caramel. But anyway, yeah, so with stories like that going around, you can't be too careful. <laughs> How would you spike a caramel? Um, I don't know, I don't know. We'll, f we'll figure out a way. Yeah. But, uh, so anyway, poor old Tom, we were quite, uh, sceptical about his chill cake, but we did eat it. We did eat it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there was a lot of Twitter twitting. Was there? Like, about, saying that about, we were ungrateful. Oh, yeah, that, oh, I'm angry with Adam and Joe, because they're so, they were so ungrateful to Tom. We were, we made it clear during the show that we were very grateful to Tom, and we yeah. thought it was a lovely gesture I to have made so. a chill cake and sent it There's in. There's no pleasing some people. But if it tasted with their demand, <laughs> what were we supposed facts? to do? Uh, but Tom has sent us a, a nice little letter here. On a, it's written in a barrow on a ripped-out piece of pad, which yeah. is quite nice, isn't it? Very nice. Uh, dear Adam and Joe, I must apologise for sending you a dodgy chill cake. Something must have happened to it between Liverpool and London. I feel a bit bad for getting your hopes up after describing it as the cake equivalent of a, of a Viscount biscuit. To try and make it up to you, here is something a lot safer. And he sent us a, p a packet of biscuits. A packet of Viscounts. Check yeah. it out. Oh, let's have one of them. What's the sell-by date? It's the chill biscuit. Come on, oh, no, they're all right. They're good till next year. Good mm. till. Thank you, Tom. That's very kind of you. Yeah, that's very nice of you. And Williamson, um, not Wilkinson. We, I think we called him Wilkinson. Possibly. It was a it was a cavalcade of inaccuracy and um, disrespect, as per usual. As per usual. So, Tom, sincere thank mm. yous, not just for these uh, chill biscuits, but for the chill cake. It was really nice of you, and we did very much appreciate it, and we were just being uh, jerks last week when we started laughing about it. But it was quite funny, because it tasted strange. It tasted very odd, and it was it suddenly occurred to us as we were eating it that it was a stupid thing to be doing live on air, like eating a, a cake that you don't really know anything about. But how lovely to get a handwritten note there. Really nice, and, um... So much character in his writing. I'm gonna eat this for you, Tom. Cheers. You just don't get that digitally. Look at that handwriting. It's expressing so much. Now that is a delicious chill biscuit. He's a dude. Thanks, That's man. the handwriting of, uh, of, uh, of a great guy. That's the handwriting of a mega dude, I think. Mmm. Do, Do you, you think? Definitely. Well, that's not something you can just bandy about. Well, I think it says, doesn't it? Tom Williamson, MD? Does it? Well, it should do. We had an angry letter about mega dude Really? From Dear Adam and Joe, I just want to write to you to set the record straight regarding a person who wrote to you going by the name of The Mega Dude. He used to be a good friend of mine, but we've recently become sworn enemies. He's not a mega dude at all. Okay, I'll admit it, he's a bit of a dude, but mega, please! Hyper maybe, but even that's being generous. I had to laugh when I saw he was trying to get some publicity using your show, because everyone knows he still lives with his mum and has only ever done sex on himself. Mega dude? Yours, Lord Sex. I mean, that's relating back to something we mentioned several weeks ago, isn't it? <laughs> Why on earth would you read that out? <laughs> well, I just did. <laughs> Regular listeners to the show will remember the Mega Dude. Mega Dude news. And the fuss we made about yeah. it. Thanks for that update. And I just, uh, it was in my, I popped that email in my 13-page No, in it, was page it was totally 100% relevant to the Mega Dude conversation. We've got a free play coming up, Joe, and I think it's got your name on yeah, it. Yeah, this is the Boards of Canada. You Do you know about them, Adam? Love them. They do electronica, don't they, kind of thing. Yeah, they're very great. Peter uh, Serafinowicz and Robert Popper got me into them. Uh, this is from their album Music Has the Right to Children, which is... Is it really from 1998? Yes. That long ago? That's a brilliant album. That's the album to start with if you don't know about them. This is a good track. It's very long, so we'll, we'll try and play you a decent chunk of it. This is called Aquarius, and it features uh, people saying the word orange. Oh, yes. And I children so. telling them that they're correct. Here it is. Six music. Today from two. I'm in a cave with Nick Cave. Good day, mate. From midday. I'm on like a terrible phone line. But now. 
It's Adam and Joe. That's a track by Animal Collective there. That's Summertime Clothes, taken from their album Merryweather Post Pavilion, which came out at the very beginning of this year. Featuring the cast of Stomp, which is great <laughs> that, uh, that they would work together in that way. <laughs> <laughs> is that too stompy for you, Swampy? It was good. No, it was very good. I've never heard Dustbin Lids used so effectively. It's one of the albums of the year, Merryweather mm. Post Pavilion. In my humble opinion... Yeah. <laughs> Have you drawn up your albums of the year list yet? No. The year we make contact. It's amazing, isn't it? Imagine. Uh, Helen Mirren. Who else is up there in that spaceship? Some bad John Russians. John Lithgow. John Lithgow's a Russian, isn't he? Yeah. I prefer 2010 to 2001. It's a better film. It's got a more upbeat ending. That's right. They explain the monolith. It makes a little bit of sense. You know, just say what they Try are, Stanley making Kubrick. a little bit of sense, Mr. Kubrick. Don't be all abstract with your giant You don't need fetuses. your 20 minutes of paint falling over the camera at the end. Just get Roy Schneider to tell us <laughs> what's in them with words. A little rompo with Kate Mirren. <laughs> Leslie Mirren, what's her name? Helen. <laughs> now listen, folks, it's time that we announce the winners of our Electric Proms Song Wars competition, for which we don't have a jingle. It feels like... I did some electric noises. Electric Proms. The Song Wars competition. Tishan, tishan, tishan. All right. That's how uh, that's how we would do it if there was a jingle. Um, and just to remind you, if you don't know what we're talking about, we asked people about three or four weeks ago to go onto the blog to check out the instrumental versions of uh, some of our old Song Wars tunes. It was Joe's Quantum of Solace song and my Nutty Room song. And we asked them to send in videos of themselves just singing along to those songs uh, or doing an interpretation of those songs. And we had some great entries that came in, and we have made our decisions right now. So do you want to say anything about your runners-up, Joe, or are you just going to go straight into your winner? Or? Well, I've written a, a little thing for that will go up on the blog that uh, that has some runners-up. I'd say the runners-up that really stood out for me were the wonderful Emmett family, who also entered our Video Wars competition. Do you remember their Video sure Wars I entry? I mean, it was really spectacular. And they, they are role models for Broken Britain, because they're a very unified family where where mother and father and son and daughter work together to achieve something greater than the sum of their parts and their video is extraordinary it's um a sort of beautifully choreographed flip chart based you know it's got lab coats and there's a whole intro spiel and the whole family dances i love to see families dance when's the last time your whole family just danced um you know, I can't remember. I mean, you'll be doing it at Centre Parks, probably. Sure we will. Yeah, on the final big night barbecue. No, I wish we but, did. Uh, I wish we danced It's a beautiful sight. So, so the Emmett family I'd pick out, and also the other people I would pick out would be Al Ronald, I think his name was, and Cy Henty, who did an extraordinary video as well. But we'll put links to the runners-up on the blog, maybe. But my winner uh, is a gentleman called Ben Mercer, and Ben's done a brilliant kind of acoustic guitar version uh, of the song. We'll play you a little clip here. This is Ben, a, a tiny clip of Ben Mercer's winning entry. The choir is He manages to make it sound really good. He sounds like Jamie T there. Yeah, something. yeah, he's good, and you sh you should take a look at him with your eyes because he's he's a contemporary customer. Absolutely, and he's opening a new shop, and it's going to be very popular. He's got skinny trousers. He really does, and his name's Ben Mercer, and I'm very honoured and privileged that he's going to be representing me and cornballs international torpedo systems plc <laughs> at the at the song wars battle because let's not forget this is a battle it is a battle what are you going to do then are you going to are you going to collaborate with him on a rendition no i'm going to just let him do his thing let him do his thing i'm not going to go and yeah uh, urinate on his fries <laughs> 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 am i he's got a lovely portion of fries i'm not going to slam my fist in there no why would you why would i do that in his chips uh, my runners up, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, and I got some really nice entries and I did my best to go and leave a little comment on all the YouTube clips that I was made aware of. Sorry if I've missed any, but, um, I really enjoyed a short film by, well, it was a short, uh, you know, like a short video Christoph by 
his last year. Yeah, I just thought it was great. And I was Short amazed that he entered killing. the um, competition, especially I mean, he's dead. Yeah, he's no longer he's alive. For a while. I know. Uh, Rob Watts and Steve Gardner, however, are alive, and they entered. They actually came round last weekend. To, to your house? No, to film us outside the Oh, building. yeah. They were waiting outside the BBC they building. They wanted to do a little bit of stalking castle. with us. Um, and it was very funny. You can see the results on YouTube. So thanks for that, chaps. Rushka Moore, she did a really nice... She had a lovely voice as well, and she was singing away and drawing a moustache on her what face. What happened to it? Well, she's a runner-up. Okay. Uh, she also had a lovely picture of Bowie in the background there and, and changed the Nutty Room lyrics to reflect our affection for Bowie. Uh, ben Adams, he was dressed up in a Superman costume on the toilet. Yes. I've got that same Superman costume, Ben, and I was very impressed. I mean, it was a very... And you've got a toilet. I've got a toilet. We should be friends. We should be buddies, and he's got a little uh, beard as well, which I currently don't have, but uh, when I when I grow my new one, let's hang out, Ben. I'm not serious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what sort of thing is that to say? <laughs> Just covering myself. You idiot hole. <laughs> I am serious, Ben. You look really great. We should hang out, but uh, there's just no time. But the winners... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's um, Noggins the horse. <laughs> just come through. Come on, Noggins. <laughs> Someone get that horse an apple. We should... L listen, Ben, come on. L let's get together. Um, <laughs> Dids and Trish, however, are my winners. Uh, they sent in a really nice close harmony version of Nutty Room. Let's hear a little clip. No! Very nice indeed. They work in a local pub in Cornwall, and uh, Dids is also an artist extraordinaire. Trish designs stuff and sells her own range of luxury umbrellas. They say they're both fairly crafty and eat a lot of cake. I'm very much looking forward to meeting you, Dids and Trish, and congratulations for being my winners. And uh, so, so what are we going to do? We're going to battle out Dids and Trish against Ben. Well, I suppose we could do as long as it was f f a fun battle. Yeah, a fattle, a fattle. I don't. I, you know, I don't think there's any point in making it a competition at that stage. No. it's just a celebration at that stage. Mm, there'll be a sense of who's won, though. There's going to be a lot of kissing, though, right? There will be a lot of kissing. I mean, you're going to win because you're Mr. Live Performance. Oh, uh, in terms of, like, our general uh, shoddiness. But, uh, you know, no, it's going to be a big love-in. And in greater terms, I'm Mr. Live Performance. Yeah. That's what I'm known as on the circuit. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> or Michael Keaton's going to play you in a film of that name. Dylan Moran's going to do the warm-up. Here he comes, Mr. Live Performance! <laughs> <laughs> it's not so far-fetched. But no, I think I think both those winners are going to do a terrific job, and we're both hugely grateful to everyone who entered, because let's face it, this competition was saved from the jaws of ignominy by our listeners' response. You know, for the first week we had no entries, and every single person who entered we're hugely grateful to for, um, for saving our reputation. We would have been the laughing stock of the castle. Vernon Kay would have been pelting us with rotten fruit. Mm. Brucey would have been making scandalous comments about us but you've saved our reputation listeners so thank you yeah thank you so much we really enjoy watching every single one of those here's the vulnerable heart with baby <laughs> dr john there with right place wrong time this is adam and joe here on bbc six music very nice to be with you this saturday morning listeners and i think it's time we had some made-up jokes don't you here's the jingle jungle I'm a funny person, I often make up jokes My jokes are more amusing than those of other folks When you hear my joke I think you'll find that you agree Come on, you're all invited to a made-up joke party We are getting more and more of these things sent up Just to remind you, if you're not familiar with this section It's not lame jokes, it's made-up jokes, right? They have to be authored by yourself so if there's if it's just a case of some very simple wordplay and a little pun, which probably has been made many times before, I wouldn't bother sending that in. Send us your really tortured, insane ones, okay? That's the ones that we're particularly interested in. But then if you do have one that's just an absolute peach and you're convinced that you made it up, we'd like to hear that one too. For example, I'll get you I'll get you started with a um a slightly gnomic one from Richard Harrison. He says, imagine my disappointment when I went to Selfridges and found out they didn't sell fridges. Nice. Yeah? Yeah. I would say that's not made up. You reckon? Yeah. I'm pretty confident. 
I mean, it's good, but I think it's got a heritage. Yeah. I think it's used. I mean, it's fair. It's second hand. It's a little obvious, I But suppose. it's good. It's f it definitely works. I like it. What about this one? Not sure about this one. This is from Josh Sparrow. Hi, Adam and Joe. I've made up a joke that I've been testing out with various people. It's received a, a range of responses so far. Here we go. Did I tell you about the new keyboard that I bought from the music shop recently? I think it may be broken. It only seems to play Wagner. I think it must be a Nazi synthesizer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's quite good, isn't it? From Josh Sparrow. That is good. Uh, here's, here's one from sarah or sarah she says i didn't make this up but my best friend did and i feel she deserves due recognition for her efforts where does the nutty professor work oh in, i don't know tell me in macadamia macadamia yeah yeah good that's good she says it made me laugh her name is nancy ockenden and she and her husband rick are avid fans they'll be dead chuffed that's good nut jokes are good we get quite a few cheese jokes macadamia. as well He's, yeah. a, he's a macademic. You get quite a lot of mascarpone jokes, don't we? Yes, we've had a yeah. load of complicated jokes about masking a pony. Cheese, I mean cheese, yeah. Yeah. After dinner snacks. How about this one from Amy and Earl in Sydney? This is our made-up joke. How do you get a samurai, his wife, a bandit, a psychic, a woodcutter, a priest, a commoner and a baby on stage as quickly as possible? Rashomon. R Rashomon. Rashomon. It's a Kurosawa film. With all those people in it. Yeah. It's very famous. That is a chucklesome little joke. Oh, come isn't? on. <laughs> that's fun. That's fun for film, though. I'm pretty sure that's I've heard Jimmy Carr that. telling that one. Yeah. That's a very old joke. Rashomon. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one from Steve. Hi, Adam and Joe. My girlfriend made this joke up a few years ago. Where is contentment made? A satisfactory. Oh, that's good. That is a good that's one. That's very good. But that's so good, you see. Yeah. I can't quite believe that's homemade. I do believe that's home. I've never heard that one before, and it never even really? occurred to me. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. Who's that by? Uh, Steve says his girlfriend made it up a few years ago. Maximum respects to his girlfriend. Mm, maximum Steve's she's girlfriend. Nice too. Ooh, look at her. She's she fine. Look at that bit look of her. the joke she made Ooh, up. Yeah, she's Ooh, nice. that is a nice yeah, joke. I like her. <sighs> Clever women. Don't make a joke at my expense, though, otherwise there'll be trouble. That's what that man would say. Sure. You got another joke there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ready for it? You yeah, sure? go on. Hello again, Adam and Joe. Oh, this is someone who's sent in several jokes. Okay, so you didn't like my first original joke. Here's my second attempt. It's on a similar theme. This is from Stuart in York. Oliver Cromwell and King Charles the first are driving down the street in a car. Yes, a car. And they're pulled over by the police. They both step out of the car as the policeman walks up to them. Is there a problem, officer? Asks Oliver Cromwell. Well, not with you, sir. But it's your friend over there, the policeman says, pointing to King James the First. I don't like his cavalier attitude. <laughs> <coughs> Is that the punchline? Hello, what? That was the punchline. Yeah. That's very... Cavalier. It's a plan. Cavalier. 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 Is, yeah. But it's nice because it's laboured, isn't it? The build-up's laboured. Certainly yeah. it's laboured. That's okay, a very nicely laboured set up. Quickly do one. Here's, here's a pithy one from Ben in Glasgow, who's aged mm. 14, he tells us. And that's impressive, I think. Cause this to be aged 14. Yeah. Imagine in getting away with that age. in this day and age. A cowboy walks into a German garage. What does he say? I don't know. Audi. Oh, that's, good. Hey. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good, Ben, in Glasgow, aged 14. I mean, if you're coming out with those at 14... That's amazing. Imagine what he's going to be coming out with at 16. You're going to have your own pretty middle-of-the-road TV show by the time you're 20. Dear Adam and Joe, I thought up the following joke today. What do sharks do to earn pocket money? Jaws. I hope you like it. Jonathan Cobb. That's Jaws. Good, you know it? what? I didn't get it when I read it in the email. Really? Yeah. Jaws. Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite good. That's very good. You got any more? Yeah, I've got hundreds of hundreds. them. I've got literally millions. All right, you're allowed one more. I'm trying to find a good one. Uh, hello, Adam and Joe. This is my joke that I made up, and you can tell I made it up because my name is Lee, and the joke involves my name, Lee. Here goes. <laughs> what did I love you, Lay, used to be called? I, I, I love you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I read that out? <laughs> Why did you read that out? That's not a joke. <laughs> 
Because it's in green. That's he said just it in words green. with his name in. <laughs> he said it in green and it attracted my eye. <laughs> Levis. Man. Here's a free play for you, listeners. This is the Bee Gees with You Should Be Dancing. We said it before that that's very reminiscent of uh, Spy Who Loved Me or a Bond, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think they wow, probably wow, kind of wow. vaguely whipped it off for the Bond film, didn't they? That's that's a good way. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that track. Can't beat the Bee Gees with a big stick, not even if you want to. Can't beat James Bond with a sort of um, ski pole with a gun in it. No. Because he dodges out the way, then does a backflip. Exactly. That's typical Bond. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Adam and Joe here on Six Music. Just gone 11.30, it's time for the news. See, I like the end of that song, James. But like the beginning and the middle part... It's a bit too poppy. Do you think it's for this kind of a uh, this kind of a show? Well, this you is know? a very very highbrow show. Yeah, James, exactly. An intellectual you know, program. It's very edgy, and we play. Our listeners are patronised by that type of rhythm. Yeah, they really are, and they're very mm. opinionated. Our they're listeners, very opinionated. You know, they won't let us get away with anything, and they certainly won't let you, James, the producer, get away with anything. Mm. They didn't let the fourteen-year-old boy from Glasgow get away with the Audi joke. People are very angry about the Audi joke being um, paraded in front of them as that boy always you know work or old ben from glasgow i'm afraid it looks as if uh, tim vine has maybe got there before you ben he, tim vine has more or less got in before absolutely but, everyone you know we've already established it is possible for two people to think of the same jokes so of ben you shouldn't you, you you're just as clever as tim vine yeah. which you know c- might be a good thing might it's... cause problems for you later <laughs> <laughs> no man it's a good thing tim vine is a joke genius and if you're on the same territory as vine then you, you've got to be doing something right but i don't believe that these people are sending them in deliberately having stolen them plucked them from the like vine do no i don't i'm standing up for them i think i think uh, ben uh, what am i what, what do i think <laughs> i don't know what you think <laughs> whatever's popular that's what you think oh you really meant that didn't you did Commander i cornish you with your torpedo let's get into some um some text donations. let's have the jingle from a real russian sent this in here it is Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Can I use an email? Is that a problem? No, it's not a problem. Like we assumed that was someone doing a sort of Borat job on the text the nation jingle, but we are assured. Although it might just be another tissue of lies. <laughs> it might just be. <laughs> <laughs> that it's a real Russian man. Anyway, let's not dwell on that. And let's get into this week's textination. What's the subject this week, Adam? Ah, pinning me down, eh? Yeah. Well, we were thinking about kind of uh, family excursions that you've had. Not necessarily summer holidays, but uh, half-term breaks and things like that that have maybe been less than enjoyable. Is yeah. that good enough? Does that fit in with what you've it's, got? Yeah, it does. It's kind of nightmare holiday stories with a sort of p- peculiar proviso that they have to be half term. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't really probably impact on the stories themselves. No. Are there any like? Holi- are we looking for something that's uniquely half term based? Don't ask me more <laughs> questions. <laughs> Just read out what you've got. Okay, this is from Gary in his shed. Dear Adam and Joe. I once went to Centre Parks at the tender age of 16. On arrival, I ran to pool, excited at the prospect of the flume. Halfway down my big toe caught a rough joint on the slide and my nail was ripped off. <gasps> Ooh! I mean, that's... Ouchie, poo-poo. That's terrible. Can that's that really terrible. happen? I mean, I'm sure their slides are much more... Smoothly. Smooth now. That's owned. probably a thing of the past. And, <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> Here's another one. Daniel in Reading. We went to Yarmouth with my mum and aunt many moons ago, and the weather was terrible, so we spent most of the time in the caravan. Mum and aunt began getting right on each other's nerves, culminating in a physical fight. My aunt hitting my mother with a broom, Whoa. and my mother hitting her on the head with a china bowl full of pasta. No way. Are they in a caravan? Yeah. That, of course. That's temp- like Kill Bill 2. <laughs> <laughs> a caravan has got to be a pressure cooker environment, though, yes. for a family holiday. It must have surely something kicks off in a more caravan. of a pressure cooker than a biodome. Uh, well, no, because the biodome is larger and there's more places to hide. I think stuff. those places trap psychic energy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think there's going to be a fight on your holiday. Well, you'll find out in a couple of weeks, I guess. What if that woman's there? 
Which woman? From the bum park. <laughs> she may well be. I it's the same general area. Yeah, that would be terrifying. Hey, come on, you're coming up here. You can stand in the queue over here. Here's one from Gary and Lynethley. Dear lads, my family went on a mystery tour which ended up in Ilfracoom. Me and my girlfriend had food poisoning. My mother stepped on our dog's ear before the journey. My brother ate a box of ecl eclairs on the bus and was sick. And my mother was attacked by a lunatic. And we saw a youngish man who sported a Hitler moustache. <laughs> he was the guy from Wild Beasts. What an amazing list of incidents. You know, the worst one I would think would be the eclair vomit. <laughs> Why? Because the toffee bits might not have been fully uh, The cream, once, once that comes back up again, is just... Oh, it, be... it, it depends whether they're chocolate eclairs or uh, Oh, you're thinking buns. They, they might have been the sweets. Yeah, 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 like the toffees with chocolate inside. I, think I got the impression it was uh, eclairs. Maybe, maybe, yeah, creamy. Creamy, creamy eclairs. Creamy puke. No, so very nice. Jason from Leeds. How do you think this is going? Very well. Very well. This is a good, <laughs> good one. Good. Yes. Jason from Leeds. Half-term holiday in Turkey went so wrong. My dad would wear a pair of too tight black satin speedos with it all on show <laughs> and a pair of clogs. Everybody <laughs> would stare at him, but he just carried on. We got talking to some other kids three days into the holiday, <laughs> and one kid said, Have you seen that man with the tight <laughs> trunks with large package wearing clogs? We said, No, whoever can that be? Oh, <laughs> that was dad. It sound, he sounds like a mega dude. There's a very strong image there, yeah. isn't there? I, mean, I can really <laughs> picture that guy. Maybe I should wear. Do you reckon I should wear that kind of thing uh, yes. under the biodome? Yes, I think. Take a picture I think of myself like if that. you're self-conscious about your hairy chest, yeah, you should go completely the other way and really ram it up people's faces. And the way to do that is can to you ram something up a face? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I think you should do. <laughs> <laughs> I think the trunks should be really tiny and there should definitely be clogs. <laughs> Very big wooden tourist clogs from, from Amsterdam. <laughs> yes. Wow. And nothing else. And nothing else. Come on, kids. I don't know because I don't know if I want to humiliate. Let's my get out children. of here. I hate the stink. <laughs> that's the kind of thing. <laughs> Who's you'd saying say. that? You oh, are. that's me saying that. You are, that. yeah. You're sort of using what what you got from that woman and right. you're you're using it as, as I don't want to in poison your the atmosphere arsenal. in the biodome. It's just an idea. All right then. Should we have a few more of these texts just before we... Or not? Possibly not. We can You know what, I think this in. is a very rarefied text the nation subject, and it would probably be better if people have the week to think about it yeah. and contribute to retro By rarefied, you mean brilliant, right? Yeah. Absolutely yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you're listening during the week, please do keep your texts on that subject coming in. Uh, the email address, and please emails only during the week, not, not texts, is adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. Here is Idlewild right now. This is Readers and Writers. It's a little kind of uh, fun community parade there from Idlewild. That was called Readers and Writers. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Just looking down my uh, document for ideas. I've got some quite half-formed ideas that I could have a go with. Oh, That's really? <laughs> is that a good idea? <laughs> I've got a note here. It just says, worst possible name for a feature film. Mm. Come on, let's go get some antihistamine. That'd be a good name for a film? Uh, well, I mean, that's very much something I'm concerned with at the moment. I would go and see it because I, I'm... Because you're a target market. Yeah, because I've got a great deal of swelling around my elbow, so I'm interested in antihistamine. W what about a film about, uh, a team of road diggers? It's called Manhole. <laughs> yeah, I would like it. Would you see it. that? I'd see anything called Manhole. Would you? Certainly. Would you see a film called Closed for Refurbishment? Mm. Do you think that would be a good name for a film? Who's in it? uh julia roberts i love her and vince vaughn uh i don't like vince vaughn he f he threatens me i don't know have you met vince vaughn uh no i don't know what he's like I, I get the feeling that he would beat me up or hurt me or intimidate me somehow the problem with that one would more be the listings yeah. you know and the and the and the hoarding at the front of the what's cinema. vince vaughn doing in closed for refurbishment um Sort of acting, sort of acting. Yeah. Kind of mainly being himself, isn't Being he? himself, yeah. Mm, don't know. I'm going to give that one a pass. That's it. That's, that was that idea. Uh, how about, this is a serious question now, Joe. Mm. What's your worst song from this year been? Worst music song that's come out? Man, I don't know. I wouldn't, 
Do they not stick in your head like that? Not really. Well, they no. don't usually stick in mine, but the other day I was out in a shop. Have you ever been to one of those? <laughs> no. They're amazing. You can get stuff there. And over the tannoy, <laughs> is that what you call it? The speakers yeah. in the shop. They were playing some music and I thought, wow, this is a bad song. And I sat there and I was mesmerized by it. And it was a kind of a up-tempo, stupid, poppy thing with a lady singing. And I just thought, who the heck is responsible for this? And it was the lyrics were just the most asinine, crass thing I'd ever heard in my life. It just seemed like something that was constructed by morons to appeal to uh, lunatics. Turned out it was Alicia Dixon. And the song was The Boy Does Nothing. Do you know that track? Have you got it with you? I should have brought it in. I assumed everyone in. knew what it was, right? I read a rave review. She's she's a talent show winner, isn't she? she she's X Factor from last year, is she? She was on Strictly Come Dancing. She used to be oh. in Mystique, I think. And she's now the oh. judge that replaced the old lady. Ah, in okay, now Strictly I'm with you, so dancing. I'm completely wrong, yeah. So and she's the one that everyone's complaining about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Poor lady, she's probably had an unpleasant year in that respect. And I'm sure she's talented after a fashion. But this song, which she probably didn't write, so I'm, mm. I'm not slagging her writing skills off, I hope, is the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> We've got to hear it. You've got to bring life. it in. I'll bring it in next week, then. How about that? I've got to go and buy yeah, the That thing was now. a good link. It was two Ill ill-formed ideas. Yeah. Uh, they really came together there into one big and Ill, ill-formed idea. <laughs> Here's a, a free play. This is, um, I don't really know what this song is, speaking of weird songs. I tried to Shazam it, but Shazam wouldn't recognise it. Oh, yeah. I think it's by a producer called Ghost. He's like a UK hip-hop producer. It's from a compilation called Seldom Seen, Often Heard. It's called Talk To Me, and it's, hello? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Boggins. How did he get in? I, I, thought, uh, I thought it smelled funny. I done a puke in a corner of the room. I'm gonna rub it on your legs. If we could just stop him making that noise, it would improve things. Anyway, yeah, this is called Talk to Me, and it's just a bit of breezy, uh, kind of lady, it's just a bit of lady fun. soul. It's just a bit of it's fun. A, a listen, bit of fun. listen, don't get worked up about it. Yeah, it's just a bit of fun. All right, here it is. I like that bit at the end there, that's really nice. I like it, it's a grower, that record. But I don't know really what it is. Where did you find it? Uh, on my hard disk. You right. know, do you ever find stuff like that? Sometimes you do, yeah, yep, yep, yep. And it didn't, uh, Shazam came up. How does Shazam work? You hold your phone to the speaker and it tells you what I know it how it works your end, but how, how does it recognise the song? Like, does wave it go through form, a computer? Distinct waveform, wave form, audio fingerprint, you know? Amazing amazing modern technology yeah. hey you know what one thing we were chatting about which we, we didn't talk about during the show but maybe we should talk about next week was the whole david letterman thing i don't know if you're aware of this viewers but david letterman was apparently blackmailed by a a producer in, at cbs um in the states who had found out about these uh, relations sexual relations that he'd had with people that worked on the tv show he does I can't believe you're getting into this a minute before the end of the I show know, but i was sort of setting it up for next week we were right. going to chat about it right um and so rather than be blackmailed by this guy david letterman confessed the whole thing live on air you can find the clip on youtube so if you haven't seen it go and check it out and uh, I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the subject. <laughs> I'm busy next week. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to talk about it. Uh, Adam's going to be co-presenting with Alistair Stewart. <laughs> um, hey, topics. thanks for listening, listeners, this week. And we really look forward to seeing anybody who's got tickets to come and see us at the Electric Proms on Thursday lunchtime. It's going to be a very f sort of friendly, chaotic occasion, but we can't wait for it. And thanks to everyone who's emailed and texted the program. Yes, uh, stay tuned for Liz Kershaw. She's coming up very shortly. We're going to leave you with Julian Casablancas. Don't forget to download the podcast on Monday evening. We love you. Bye. Bye.